All right. This is just water and uh, Bach remedies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rescue remedy. Okay, let me get my phone off. This is just applied kinesiology. Just turning him on. Mm -hmm. Effective purposes. Mm -hmm. Effective purposes. Mm -hmm. Moving the energy of the spine. I've already done this to myself. Rub that T27 there. One more time. Pretty stoic horse. I don't know how much reaction I'm going to be able to get from him. But he'll also stand really still. Mm -hmm. So that's great. My name is Jenny Crane. Uh, this is my homework for Tom Mays' Integrated Equine Therapies, Craniosacral 2. Um, this is Charlie. He is an eight-year-old gelding. He's used for basically flat work and trail riding. Um, he's fed just basic uh, hay and um, a bit of oats, but not much, um, and water. So very simple, simple diet. Uh, he doesn't have any significant medical issues that are known. Um, and he is ridden and exercised about one hour every day. So the first thing that I want to do to start out is to meld with the horse um, before any assessment is completed. And this will allow us to, to join and really enter into the cranial sequel work together. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to tell him what I'm, I'm mentally going to give him a picture that I'm going to stick my hand up underneath his lip and we're going to work with some energy right away. And that will hopefully meld us and uh, I'll be able to read him a bit better. So my goal right now is just to get him used to my hand in his mouth and basically work on the primary uh, T27, I believe it is, um, or T22 acupressure point. And now I'm lightening up my hand a bit. Oops. That was tricky. a little bit myself. Deep breath. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to send energy up his head and down his back and this will allow me to feel where he might have some blocks but also let me acknowledge his energy. So here we go. Okay, it stopped right about lumbar area, maybe um, two or three lumbar. It's going to come back now. It's a very round energy, very soft, but with a bit of an edge to it as well. There we go. I just pushed it back to the sacrum. I'm going to go down to his tail now. Now we're just going to slowly check out each other's energies. I do this with all the horses. If they don't let me come into their mouth, I'll generally just go to the yin tain point on their forehead or maybe the highway. But Charlie, I know, is really receptive to this. He's going to go, he's turning his head in a bit of a pattern here. So I'm just going to follow him. He's asking to turn his head. Okay. 
Now what I'm going to do too, as in human patients, I really want to loosen up that maxilla. So I'm going to pull my hand slightly away from his gum, asking his maxilla to come forward into my hands. Sometimes I can grab the wolf teeth, if I can get my fingers around them a little bit, and really try to encourage that maxilla to come down and more forward. I might do a little bit of a wiggle. He doesn't seem to mind this at all. Okay. So there's flies around, so that's not helping. So he turned his left, his head to the left before, so this is just a pattern, I think, that he has to work through. Usually I wouldn't keep my hands in this long. Again, I'm asking that maxilla to continue to drop forward. Wiggling it just a little bit. Very, very gentle. There is nothing harsh about cranial sacral therapy. And I want him to also understand that I am not here to hurt him. And this is about all the pressure I'll be using throughout the session. Okay, good boy. Good boy. Still point. And it might actually be a, a significant detector because it did drop off so quickly. So I'm just going to let him set for just a minute. Let him think about what just happened. And there we go. So his cranial circuit rhythm came on a bit. It's, it's fluxing just a little bit, but um, there we go. Okay. So my next step, what I like to do, is I go to the ying tang point. Ying tang point is right here, almost in the center of his forehead. You can consider it that way. Doing the same thing. I'm going to do some energy work. Again, what I'm doing is I'm testing to see how far I can get that energy down his back. But also at this point, I can also work with some fascia. So I'm putting a slight drag on the tissue. Um, so the, the fascia that runs basically from around his brain, down his neck, to his heart. So I'm thinking about the fascia and gently tugging it. So there's already, I feel there's a hitch on his right scalpula area. Not on his left where his heart is, but more on the right side. Um, and that actually, that's tight all the way down to his right hind leg. While I'm here, I can also assess his emotional or mental stability. So the emotional side is on the left side. So he does, I can feel that he does have some cloudiness as far as emotions are concerned. And then mental, he's pretty sharp. He knows how to play the game. But if I wanted to really work with the horse on um, a more uh, woo-woo or emotional level, this would be one of the first places that I go. Now, what I can also do, I'm going to lighten my hands up a bit. And right when I'm here, I'm going to just start feeling for his cranial bones. And if anything's a, a lot out of alignment. And I feel already his frontal bone on his left side is a little bit out of alignment, as well as his right zygomatic. That's interesting. Um, so what that means with the frontal, it, the frontal bone relates a lot to the cervical bones or the cervical um, vertebrae, just as the um, nasal bone, sorry, I said that wrong. So the nasal bones down here, they relate to the cervical vertebrae. And then the frontal bone actually relates to the thoracic. So if I gently try to listen to that. So again, it's right side, somewhere around Okay, maybe, maybe around T13, T14. It's a little higher up on his frontal bone here. Um, and then the parietal, and that's where you get the lumbars. It's pretty good. So on horses that don't let me touch their face, I will actually uh, work on the sacrum directly because then I can get directly to the occiput.
that way as well. And I loosen him up. He doesn't seem to have too much of a problem right now with me touching his face, but if that changes, I will work from the sacrum. Okay, the next thought I'm going to do, I have the occiput or the condyles in my hands, and now I'm going to do a dural tube pull. And what I'm doing is I'm asking that dural tube to basically come forward and pull very gently on it to see if there's any restrictions, especially the nerves in between the, that come out the verte vertebral column. There we go. Okay, and I'll do the same when I move back to the sacrum. Good boy. So again, I feel there's some hitch somewhere on the lumbar area. I'm not getting too much on T13, but there is still something there. Definitely lumbar and, like I said, it's a small hitch at T13. Okay, so now I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back to his, oops, I forgot my water. Let me grab his sacrum. I'm just going to spray it on here, on his back. Easy to deploy. I'm going to meld with his sacrum. Let's find his cranial sacral rhythm. I'm going to call it up into my hands. Okay. So right now he's in flexion, so the, the cranial is coming back towards his, his hind end. Okay, it's reached its point. Now it's going to start moving forward. Here we go. It's moving forward. And I'm just going to give a kind of a tiny little bit of shove. This is more of a, like a rock and glide, but I find that it helps me really get into and really help meld a little bit more of that cranial sacral rhythm. So now he's, he's coming to the back. He's in flexion again. So I'm going to pull just a bit on that sacrum. Okay, now he's hit the midpoint, and now he's going back into extension. So when it comes back to flexion again, I'm going to go ahead and stop his rhythm, or attempt to stop it, and induce a still point. Still points are actually good for all of us. It's like uh, rebooting your computer. So when I do it on humans, uh, they generally fall in a bit of a deeper stupor, um, but it allows everything to reset. So here we go. He's kind of fighting a bit. He's going deeper. And there, that's a still point. So what I'm feeling underneath my hands is basically his cranial sacral rhythm has stopped. Okay, I'm going to release. He kindly nodded at his head a little bit. If you notice his head is down, his eyes are slightly closed. He's very relaxed right now. That's perfect. Now while I'm here, I might also do a lumbar, sacral lumbar uh, junction uh, release. So I'll, I'll have, because I have my hands right here, I'm going to meld back into that sacrum and then the lumbar seven. And I'm going to hold lumbar seven as, as uh, straight as I can. And now I'm going to actually ask the sacrum to separate itself a bit more from the lumbar. And he's licking and chewing. So that was a, something that he needed. <laughs> That's good. Good boy. Now he's fidgeting a little bit, which is okay. That's just another reaction, how some horses respond to this work. I'm gonna, with my other hand, I'm going to come back, and I'm going to do a rock and glide very gently while I'm here again, just again to prepare his head for some work. So again, I'm finding his craniosacral rhythm, and I'm using his sacrum as his driver. And so every time I feel his, his craniosacral rhythm come back, I'm pulling a little bit on the coccyx bones, or the caudal, caudal vertebrae. So it's just a rock and glide. That's all I'm doing. Now I'm going to come down to the base of the tail.
Okay. Sliding my hand so every moment he seems to be very calm about this. I'm not worried. Now I'm actually going to push his tail back up with the extension. There we go. We're going to come back again. He actually loosened his tail for me, <clears throat> um, which is great. Some horses, when you start doing this movement, they really clamp their tails down. And then you might have to do some uh, uh, massage work to get them to loosen that back up. Or just continue doing the rock and glide. So I think with him, he's reacting very nicely to this. So I think we can probably go ahead and start working on the head. First though, what I'd like to do is I'm going to do an assessment. So real quick, there's a couple of different ways to assessment. I showed you a couple of them, one being the dural tube pull, and um, then also how the different bones on the facial, the facial bones, how those actually react to different parts of his body. There's also, you can also test the bladder meridian. So the bladder meridian is about two inches off of the vertebral column. So if I just start gently scratching here along the bladder meridian, and see he's twitched just a little bit, and that's T13, although this is on his left side, not his right. I'm just going to continue on down. Okay, nothing too hard, except maybe down here. That's... Um, more of his, uh, what, so this is his stomach. So that's probably his uh, spleen, acu, uh, sorry, uh, associated meridian point there. But he's not that bad, really. Um, if I want to test the diaphragm, I'm going to come a little bit off his lumbar. I'm going to go basically down and medial, and he's not flinching at all. So same thing on this side. I can do it once, a little bit of reaction there, but not bad. So his diaphragm's in good shape. I'm going to come around and do his other side. So again, I'm just flinching, seeing where he reacts. So this is interesting. Right here around T, this is around T14, T13, T14. If I do this, you see this muscle just twitching right here? So right along here is more of his uh, I'm going to say it's his small intestines. Um, his liver is right along here. Not much is reacting to that. Um, so kidney maybe. No, his kidney's fine. So I'm just going to continue on my flinch test here. Again, he could just be very, very stoic. He's not showing much here. Diaphragm, no. The other way that I can work with horses is I use something called arcing. So arcing is used in craniosacral therapy where it's more of I can back up and points draw me towards them to, to be worked. So automatically, it, some people can actually feel the vibrations. I, I work more off of seeing it in my mind's eye. So right away, I see this area. So if this, if this was a session with him, I would probably want to work this area a little bit. Yes, and he's coming back to me saying, yeah, that's something right there. Okay. He's being a very good boy. You're being very good. Thank you. So, now on to, what we want to do next is we're going to work on the diaphragms. Okay, there are several different diaphragms. The first being the pelvic diaphragm which basically I'm going to engage the tissues here. I'm going to start out very, very lightly with my hands. And then I'm going to slowly come in until I feel his tissues engage me. So right there, I'm hearing a lot of gurgling. I'm just going to hold this for a little bit. And while I'm doing this, I'm really thinking about focusing my energy between my two hands. I'm trying to balance it out a bit. I know I need more energy in my top hand and my uh, left hand. There we 
we go. So I felt a slight movement of some tissues. So I personally would like to continue doing this. Um, I like to hang out here for a little while to really get some good releases. And he doesn't seem to mind this at all. Um, but we need to move on, so I'm going to move on to the diaphragm. So for the diaphragm release, I'm going to find the bottom of the, the sternum. It's right about here. And then my hand is going to be somewhere on L3, L4. That's where the tip of the diaphragm muscle actually attaches. Uh, I want to say that they're called cuticle, uh, cuticle, cumin, something like that. It's just <laughs> Anyways, so I'm going to basically send energy between my hands. I'm at a bit of a diagonal. So if I pull my hands out here, I'm at a bit of a diagonal. And I want to put my top hand over the other side of this vertebral column. Again, asking to engage the diaphragm muscles. He's moving a little bit. That could be somewhat the flies, but I also think it's fidgeting. Many times horses will release. Um, first they fidget a bit, and then they'll finally release. He just passed some gas, which is also a good release. There we go. Now, I don't want to forget the other side on this, but for now I'm just going to move forward. The next part that I'd go to is the thoracic inlet. So this is another diaphragm. And when I do this, I imagine going directly through his heart, up through his diaphragm, his lungs. Thinking about all the blood and nerves in this area. And it's important that we do these diaphragms because as we start working on the head, we might actually release some hitches that would increase the blood flow either to or from his head. And we want to make sure that all the diaphragms are clear and ready to accept that extra nerve or, or blood nerve impulses, et cetera. Um, I stop because I'm feeling some issues with his blood. So I'm going to come over to his other side real quick. Now his heart is on the left side primarily. The horse's heart is right almost where the girth would, niche, would sit. Yeah. So I'm going to do that thoracic inlet again on this side. And actually, I'm just going to go directly over his heart. Okay, I'm sensing that. I'm sensing that this is more of a of an artery issue in his neck. Than a, than a vein. Just work on his heart for just a second here. Now he's licking and chewing at that, so it could be the flies, but I think it has to do with his heart. Okay. So what I'm feeling right now is actually one of his lower chambers. Now is it blood or arterial? Oh, I just felt his heart vibrate a little bit. So sometimes when I work here, I'll feel the horse, horse's heart start beating at different rhythms. Um, and sometimes I'll actually feel the heart move. And I think that's good enough for now. I'm going to come right here, see if I can grab the, um, the vein. I still have one hand on the heart, the other on his vein here, and see if I can get any 
there's any issues. And it's just craniosacral therapy, so I'm following the movement of that artery or vein. I want to say this is, this is an artery, so it's pretty deep. He's falling asleep, so that's, a good, again, a good sign that I'm on the right spot. So his heart just gave another little lurch. There we go. I just felt a flush in my hands. Now he's looking and chewing a little bit. That's good. He's got a lot of flies around his, his uh, nose right now. He's being very good about everything. Good boy, Charlie. Okay. So I'm going to move on and start working through some of the facial bones here. The first thing I want to do is an atlas uh, decompression. So I'm going to feel for his atlas here on either side and see if one side is higher than the other. No, they're actually pretty even. He, he's, he's pretty even here. I think he seems pretty calm, so what I'm going to do... Oops. This is a pretty long lead rope. Um, I don't usually do this with some horses because I've been stepped on, <laughs> but I think I can do this with him. So I'm going to come underneath him and see if I can get him to relax that atlas a little bit more. So this is all the pressure I'm gonna be using. Asking him to come and rest his head on my shoulder. He may or may not be willing to do that. Slowly letting some weight go. There we go. So I'm asking a little bit more pressure, but then I'll immediately lighten up again. I don't want him to brace. Everything we do in craniosacral has to be underneath the brace. There we go. So there's movement. Basically, his left just dropped a bit more. And now, let's see if I can get that right to drop. You can also do this facing the back. So if I turn around and come up under here, this lead rope is really long. He might be willing to relax a little bit more if I come up underneath his shoulder, underneath my shoulder. Chiropractors use this move as well, so a lot of horses are generally pretty nervous about it. Um, so I have to make sure that I tell them that I'm using very light pressure. The next move I'm going to base is a, a occiput atlas decompression. So my right hand is on either side of his atlas, and I'm trying to hold it, thinking of holding it very, very stable, and then I'm going to gently ask his occiput to separate from that. So I'm putting about five cents pressure, maybe a little bit more, maybe about 10 cents here. And until I can feel that engagement. There we go. At this point too, I also like to check in with the brain. So the brain stem is right here underneath my hands. So I might think about the fourth ventricle. There we go. Fourth ventricle is doing just fine, and actually when I started thinking about that, he started lowering his head even more. Um, I can also think about the, th the pawns, cerebellum. Cerebellum has something going on there. There we 
we go. So he's twisting a little bit in his head. When I'm feeling underneath my hands, I feel like a slight rotation to the left. Now it's coming back to the right. I know that you probably can't see it on the camera, but um, this is just very, very gentle movements. There we go. There. Now he just cocked his head a little bit. That was his occiput coming forward just a little bit. Decompressing. Good boy. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to try to separate the condyles. And the condyles on the horse are these two little bumps. And those condyles are what basically the atlas rotates um, against. And so it would be basically our frame and magnum if you want to think about that. Uh, so what I'm asking that frame and magnum to do, and that's where the, the bulk of the spinal cord, that's where the spinal cord comes through, right? Along with some other um, uh, arteries and veins and so on and so forth. But I'm really asking that frame and magnum to widen. Again, he shook. I think that might just be the flies, but the licking and chewing, I think it is in result from what I'm doing at this point. And what I can do at this time, too, is also really send some energy in between that occiput and atlas to help those muscles relax even more at his pull, to allow the uh, frame of magnet to open up a bit more. And it's all intention. There's no way I'm actually touching the frame of magnet right now. There we go. So I felt some release on the right side. Good boy. Yeah. Good boy. So, go ahead. So he just stopped and itched a little bit and sometimes, you know, it could be because of the flies, but it can also be a bit of a release as well. Because he's stretching himself, he's feeling his new, the, the way his body is working again. Or the, the new way his body is coming together again. Nice big sigh there. Um, in the diaphragm releases, I have to back up a little bit. I actually forgot to do the hyoid, which um, I've been doing a lot of study on the hyoid, and it's pretty fascinating. The horse's hyoid bone basically is a slightly different than the human hyoid bone. The human hyoid bone doesn't really connect directly to the trachea nor to the tongue. It does via muscles and such. But the horse's um, hyoid bone actually connects to their tongue. It has a little um, tag to it, an actual bone that the, the tongue fits into. Um, it also is very large and almost spider-like looking. So it actually comes up into his uh, glutteral pouch, which sits right about here. And um, the stylohyoid is this large bone. So the hyoid is actually down here. But there's a large bone that comes up on either side. So if I want to get the hyoid bone, I can also come to the side here as well as having my hand on the bottom. And again, I'm just waiting and following the movement. Um, okay, that's flies. Um, so he does have some tension here. That's why he's suddenly being curious. He doesn't want to show it to me. And I've been doing some uh, uh, work on, again, the difference between the human hyoid and uh, the horse hyoid. But I find that when horses are afraid to contact the bit, they tend to have uh, uh, less movement in the hyoid. Or the, even the owners, if the owners aren't allowing themselves to let the horse contact the bit, if they're afraid of contacting that bit, hurt, feeling they hurt, hurt their horse, um, that actually works against them. Because the horse's tongue, if I feel underneath here, he's, his muscles, his myohyoid muscle down here is pretty loose. Um, so I don't think this is a problem with him, but on some horses, if I'm not feeling movement of that highway bone as I am with him, I'll actually come underneath and, and um, really start going, oh, what do you call it, uh, a lateral, I'll put my fingers lateral and, and basically run my fingers up against his mandible underneath his tongue and do a bit of a massage. So I'm going up and pulling out very gently and I'm rolling my hands around the bone of the mandible. So I don't know if you can catch that with the camera, but I'm putting my fingers up, 
So as, high, as much as he'll let me, I'm pulling out laterally, and then I'm slowly releasing that. There we go. Now horses, I think, really, really like us to do this. I generally only do one side at a time because I think it's a pretty um, invasive, well, not, not tremendously invasive. It does feel good when you have it done to yourself. It's really just helping those muscles relax. And that, that, these muscles down here, again, are directly connected to the highway bone. So I'm just doing, see if he'll handle both sides. He's pretty good about this. His eyes relaxing, so obviously it's not a big deal to him. Okay, so that's the highway bone. Um, now I can come in, and I generally like to do the frontal bone next. So again, with just very light pressure, I'm going to basically meld with the, the frontal bone. And already I feel the right side moving a little bit in a different rhythm than the left. But my goal for the frontal bone, and look at his lips, he's moving his lips around, something's going on here. Um, with the frontal bone, my goal is basically to lift it away from his brain. So I want to pull the fox cerebri, fox cerebri and cerebelli. That's my goal here. And also to, to stabilize the rhythm in both sides. But right now I think I'm just focused. I want to really get that frontal bone. You can do the frontal bone in several ways. If the horse lets you, you can come on straight up the front here. I haven't found much luck with this. I think that's too claustrophobic for them. So I'm actually lifting my hands, grabbing the bone, and lifting it up. He's got an itch. And that's also my job, to be an itching post sometimes. You can also come up from underneath if he lets me. Well, he's, he's letting go of some stuff right now. Good boy. If he lets me, I can also come up on either side and come this way and then actually feel the rotation of those bones. So they're flexing right now. They're kind of going out. So if I was to really enhance this movement, they're coming out this way and then in out and in. So because he's a little different on the right side, I'm going to basically, on the, the, the flexion part, I'm going to hold it. Okay, so I've stopped the movement, the cranial sacral movement of those bones. This feels kind of strange to him. He's not sure he likes that. Okay, I'm going to encourage more flexion in the right side. There we go. Something just released a little bit. So I'm going to back off. I'm going to feel that movement again. It's better. Okay, at this point, I'd like to come down and do the zygomatics. Let him do a bit of releasing here. You okay to move on? Good boy. That's a good boy. Okay. So the zygomatics actually run a bit underneath the eye, but it's easier to get a good grip by actually going using some of that frontal bone still. And it's almost like you're putting blinders on them. That's the way I think about it. And so again, I'm going to feel for the rhythm and see which side might be stuck. So again, it's his right side. 
it's almost a little higher than his left. So that might be indicative of a shear somewhere. So that's weird. I basically stopped him in, in uh, inflection again on his zygomatic bones and the release and see if things have settled down a little bit. So extension and flexion. So things are a little bit more stable there. Then I like to come over to the, temp the uh, lacrimal bones. So the lacrimal bones sit almost right at the corner. And you just need one finger here. They're very, very small bones. And I'm just going to concentrate on following the movement. I'm actually resting my hand on, on a bit of his face just to try to keep my finger, my, my, uh, finger as still as possible as I follow that movement of that lacrimal bone. A lot of emotion is actually held in the lacrimal. He does not mind this at all. So the bone, what I'm feeling is it's just kind of circulating a little bit. My job is only to follow. It will land where it wants to land. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna come back over on this side and do the other lacrimal. Now this horse is pretty sensitive to flies. Um, they generally put a fly sheet on him and a fly mask. So I know that the cranial sacral work right now is actually relaxing him a bit because there are a lot of flies around and he's not, re <laughs> he's not reacting. Of course now that I talk about it, he's reacting. Um, Thank you. So if you notice with my bottom hand, I'm holding onto the lead rope. I'm not holding his head at all. It's just a light touch, just so that I know that if I need to immediately push his head somewhere, I have at least a little bit of control. You also notice my body language. I'm standing very close to the horse. Because if he moves, he, he can't hurt me as much. There we go. Now that's a yawn, so that's a very nice release. Good boy. We'll give him just a second here before continuing. Letting him think about what just happened and possibly run away. Come on. <laughs> Bring him back up a little bit. Good boy. Okay, so next we are going to do the nasal bones here. Nasal bones again are like the other bones, they're paired with a suture in between them. The nasal bones, my objective is not only to get the rhythm straight, but also to ask the nasal bones to come um, ventral at a, about a 45 degree angle. So I'm asking them to come down towards his nose. Um, the, the nasal bones on the human are so small, but on the horse they actually take up you know, almost this entire, this entire area. So I'm going to gently encourage those bones to come down. snorting a little bit. This is actually very helpful for horses that have allergies, I found, or their sinuses. Working with the nasal bone, if, if horses are having um, allergic reactions to the weather or, or what, have, what have you, um, they tend to really like this work on the nasal bone. And you notice his head is slowly coming down. It's not me pushing his head down. Again, I'm just using very light pressure, uh, five cents, 
maybe a dime. There we go. And I can feel also, um, one of the good points about melding at the very beginning is it gives me a sense of where he is and I can feel when it's time for me to stop with a certain mood. That's enough. So I don't push him. It's the important part of cranial psychotherapy is listening. So horses can't talk, but if you can pick up and meld with them and really keep your mind open and yourself very grounded, they can. Um, and I want to make sure to respect the horse. Uh, I think a lot of people um, forget that aspect. They want so much to heal somebody as quick as possible. But in all reality, it's up to the animals, up to the soul or what have you, as to when that release is going to happen. So I'm just helping remove a couple of those layers. OK, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to work on the incisives a little bit here. This is almost the teeth, and when I do this, I start getting into a lot of more teeth. So I start feeling the roots. It's also a good way to make them sneeze. I was probably too close to the nose and he didn't like that. That's okay. So something is definitely happening on his left side. So he has what I'm feeling, I can actually feel the sinuses a little bit, but the one on the left side here where my, my uh, middle finger is pointing is a little bit more swollen. So if I think about the, the roots of the teeth or even just this, this cavity up here, the muscles, the tissue, I'm just going to follow it. Follow the movement, follow where it wants me to go. There we go. There we go. He, he relaxed into that. Good boy. Okay, so my next point I'm going to look at is this ethmoid bone. So the ethmoid bone is actually pretty deep. It's nothing that I can actually feel with my hands. So it sits right about here, and it actually goes in a different motion than the occiput. So when the occiput flexes, the ethmoid bone is going to extend. So I have the ethmoid bow and I'm feeling it with my intention. So he's in flexion right now. So the ethmoid bone is actually going down. Now it's going to come back up. And the occiput is now actually in an extension. Okay, we're going to come down again. And now when it comes back into flexion, his ethmoid bone, I'm going to really stop it and really try to push the occiput and ethmoid bone together. Stop that rhythm and ask that ethmoid bone to just really come up, really go into flexion. And Charlie isn't minding this at all. so. That's good. And I'm going to see if I can, he's stepping back. So that's, that's a good sign. That will help release it a bit more. So I'm going to get him to step back one more time. There's some, some distractions off to the side. Focus on me, buddy. Focus on this. There we go. 
I kind of nudged it home just a little bit there. Very curious. Yes. So when horses come back to me, um, which is what he's doing right now, again, I take that as a good sign. So even though he's not exhibiting a lot of yawning or head shaking or whatever, he's certainly not upset about the work being done on him. Thank you for licking my hand. Okay, the next, the next move I'm going to go into is the sphenoid. The sphenoid is, is like a, a butterfly, um, and it sits. It's, a, it's actually a very large bone, and a lot of nerves and uh, blood vessels actually run through the sphenoid. So if you're having a lot of head shaking issues, that's one of the places you want to work. So the sphenoid, again, it's something that I can't really touch, but I'm going to come behind the eyes on both sides with my attention. I'm going to go into that sphenoid. There it is. So right now, the sphenoid is kind of rocking forward towards his nose. So that would be extension. Now it's coming back. Midpoint. Now it's going into extension. So the cranial sacral rhythm of the sphenoid is pretty stable. I'm going to go ahead and test now um, some shears as well as torsion. So with shears, what I'm going to do, I'll, I'll show you real quick here. With shears, I'm going to ask the sphenoid to move this way and then move that way. But I'm always going to bring the sphenoid back to the middle. That's very important. Um, and then as far as a torsion goes, I'm actually going to ask the sphenoid to twist this way and this way. Again, always bringing it back to the center. Okay, don't lose focus, buddy. Quite done yet. We're almost done, but not quite. Okay, so here we go. So I'm testing out for the, the shear. very odd to a lot of horses or even humans to feel movement inside their head. So that fidgeting that I was doing is just because this is just such an odd thing. Some horses will stand perfectly still, others will not. So I don't feel any issue from left to right in that shear. He does tend to come a little bit more to the right than to the left, but it's not bad. Go ahead. Move this. And now I'm going to do the torsion. So right now I'm asking my right hand to come forward a little bit, the left to come back. Center. I'm going to do the, the right hand is coming back. It's coming towards the center again. So on this one, I am noticing that it's much easier to move to the right than to the left. So this means that he has a right torsion. So I'm going to again bring it to the right here. Very comfortable, moves very easily. Center. I'm going to go into the area of least restriction, which is why I went to the right first. Now I'm going to go to the left. We have some distractions out in the back. That's what he's looking at. So this is one of the probably the most important part to be very patient with. It doesn't happen very quickly all the time. He's fidgeting because this is just uncomfortable. 
trying to begin with that my intention to really work. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, so it did release there. I'm going to bring it back. Make sure it's midline. Follow the rhythm again. Okay. Now what I like to do also, just as with a human, I want to decompress and then release. Or excuse me, I want to compress. Compress it first and then decompress. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask it to go into flexion and basically hold it. Wow. Almost a yawn there. I'm going to wait to see if I can feel as far back as it can go. Okay, it's kind of uh, moving a little bit. I'm just going to wait a little bit. Good boy. There we go. Okay, so the left side finally joined up with the right. Now I'm going to decompress. So I'm basically lifting that sphenoid up and out. You never want to leave a uh, sphenoid bone compressed. There we go. You want the blood, you want the nerves, everything around that sphenoid to be as free as possible. Good boy. Okay. So, TMJ. So this is really easy. Again, it's a comp it's a compression decompression. So I'm going to get under his mandible here. Basically, ask that mandible to come up. <laughs> Not that far up. Okay. So I'm going to compress that mandible. Again, it's probably a little bit more than a five cent pressure, but not by far. I'm going to do a little bit of a wiggle just to see if I can compress it evenly. So something else about the mandible that's worth to note is you can tell if they have issues with their scapula or the issue of the pelvis. So what I'm feeling here is his left side is fine, it's, it's compressed. But his right side is a little bit stiffer. It doesn't want to come up. It's, it's, there we go, okay, it's moving up a little bit now. There we go. So what that tells me is he probably has uh, some issues with his uh, right lead. which again, everything in your body's connected. So if I can work on his scapula via his, mat, his uh, mandible, by all means, let's give it a try. There we go. Okay, he's had enough. So now I'm gonna hold on to that ramus, and I'm gonna decompress. I'm gonna basically pull his ramus down. Oh, well, he's gonna pull it himself. Um, there we go. Pull it ventrally, and then when it feels like it's about to be done with, it's gonna go basically in a 45 de degree angle, maybe up towards his nose. There we go. Getting some nice releases all the way through there. Okay. Now I'm feeling my hands being, like he's moving his nose too, but. Um, there's also some different smells going on. We have a, a cleaning crew, so I know his attention is, is probably being brought to that as well. Horses are extremely sensitive, and I often tell people, you know, don't wear perfume. Whatever you do uh, around horses, it's just not worth it. There we go. Good boy. Okay, so one of the final things I'd like to work on with him or just to show you is his trigeminal nerves. So the trigeminal nerve is has three main branches. One goes to his eye, another comes down here on his mandible, then maxilla. It actually goes into his lymph nodes. Um, it's a very important nerve and it generally starts between his atlas and his occiput. So if I come over here, 
It's usually right about there. If I can't feel it, what I do is, again, I ask my intention. I say, with, with my intention and with my melding of the horse, show me where that trigeminal nerve is. Now, this is, horse is not a head shaker, but with head shakers, you definitely want to work on that trigeminal nerve. Usually, the way it goes to the, the, the nerve part that goes behind the eyes is real, where the real issue is. So again, I'm going to use, he doesn't have much of an issue here. I'm not feeling much tightness, but if there were, I'd be using a basic rock and glide. So with my left hand being the driver, I'm going to really meld with that trigeminal nerve. There it is. Feel the cranial sacral rhythm. And with my right hand, I'm going to basically follow it and create some tension along that nerve. Look at his eye. It's slowly coming down. He's a little worried about this, but he's doing fine. feel an issue with him. But I follow it as far as I can and then I come down here and I do another branch. This one might be more of an issue with him. He's awfully worried about it. So I'm going to stop here but I'm going to, the next thing I want to do is an ear pull. I don't know if this horse has any issues with his ear but I want to loosen up that temporal bone which may also help his, his trigeminal nerve, help release the occiput. And anyways, it's a chain of events. So I'm gonna just come up here, I'm gonna rub around his ear, see if he's okay with me. Okay, he seems fine. So I'm gonna do a very gentle ear pull. Again, I want it, my goal is to get to the tentorium cerebri, that membrane within the brain, the membrane that surrounds one of the, the dura mater, membranes, meninges. I'm really not pulling that hard and I'm coming out at a 45 degree angle. Until I feel that viscosity, viscosity. horses are shy, you'll want to work around it. And if the horse definitely will not let you go and touch his ear, you can actually go up underneath him. I've done this with some horses. And put your hands around the bottom of the ears and work the temporal bone that way. But he seems to be OK with this. So again, gentle pull. Now I'm doing the temporal bones and I would normally go to the parietal bones as well. The parietal bones I found a lot of good work is done if I actually, as with a human, I'm going to decompress. I want to basically decompress the parietal bone from the, from the temporal bones and then lift up. So it's very similar to the frontal bone on how I work with that except I don't do the decompression. The parietal bone, I want to do that decompression. I've had a lot of luck with horses on that. There we go. His eyes softening just a bit. I'm feeling that membrane stretching out. There we go. Nice. Okay. So I think he's pretty much done. But I want to just very quickly show you what I do with the parietal bone. So again, I'd be up here. If I could come up underneath him. So the parietal bone sits right about here. And again, I, I want to basically compress in. So I'm going like this, this type of movement. And then I bring it up. So compress, asking the sutures between the occiput and the frontal to release. 
sorry, the uh, sorry, the the temporal temporal frontal bones. Really, you see, the nice big sigh, and then lift up. Okay. So Charlie has been a very very good horse for all of this. Um, generally, what I like to do <laughs> to try to stimulate them again is I try to just move this energy up through them, maybe get those bladder meridians working. Um, what I could do too is do another assessment of him to see how everything is working. Um, so if I come up here and just see in relation to the bones in his head. Yeah, so there's a lot more movement than there was when I started. And there he's looking at you again, all good. So we'll just rub him down a little bit. Make sure he wakes up. Make sure I get that sacrum. And not only the horse is liking this, but I really think that there's value in getting their blood and nerves working again after this epicranial sacral work. Okay, so thank you very much. And uh, you can contact me at Jenny Crane at Comcast.net or my new name is Facilitated Healing. So I'll look for my website soon. Thank you.